Hello, hi. Welcome again to Hope Alive with Mary. Another time to, you know, to be with you. Hope everyone is doing great. How are you doing? Yes, we've been, we started this very interesting topic last week, talking about the axe head, the implications. And last week was wonderful. It was great. And um, then we'll just, we'll be rounding up on that today, the part two of it. Hallelujah. So before we carry on, um, please, you need to watch this video to the end because it will be a huge blessing to you. You will discover things that you haven't discovered before. And if possible, we have it. I mean, and then we'll have a little time of prayers at the end of this video. So we began last week by looking at Second um, Kings, Second Kings chapter six. Second Kings chapter six. I'm not going to read it again today. I read it last week. Please um, do read it if you haven't. And um, from verse one to seven, and this was in a situation where the um, was well, the sons of the prophet had approached Elisha and said to the Elisha that where we are staying is too small. I know I would. Uh, I, I really, you need to watch the part one if you haven't of this video. You do need to watch it. What does that mean to say? Oh, the where we are is too small. The implication: God is calling us to growth. God is calling us to development. God is calling us not to settle. God is asking us not to settle. It's not time to settle. It's time to keep pushing. It's time to be moving, looking at expansion and growth. So look at that. There's so many lessons that we learned already in the part one. Please go and look at it. So we're going to carry on in part two today. And what I want to look at here in part two is what the Bible says that while they were cutting the, the logs, the axe head fell into um, the water. So uh, one of the, pro the, the the person that was doing the cutting screamed and uh, cried out and said, um, let me read what he said in particular. The, um, the Bible says, but one of them was cutting a tree, his axe head fell into the river. Oh, sir, he cried, it was borrowed axe. Last week, we talked about the need to have God with you in your journey of growth. If Elisha was not there, who would they have cried to? If Christ was not there you know, at the time the storm hit, who would the apostles have cried to? If God is not was not with Moses, when Moses were, I mean, they carry leading the children of Israel to the promised land, at the time they encountered situations and challenges and they, you know on their path, who would he have called to? So it's important that you have God with you. So he, this command called out to God. So who do you call out to? When you encounter challenges in your life, no matter what it is, who do you call out to? Who do you call out to? Who have you got? Have you got Christ in your boat? Have you got him as in your company of what you're doing? Whatever he has called you to. Either you're developing yourself in terms of taking a further education or it's a new job or it's you're expanding your family or you're getting married or it's a business you're starting or whatever it is that you are doing. Is God there? Who do you call on where there is a need? This guy called on Elisha straight away and said, Elisha, you know, there's a problem. Elisha, there's a problem. So another point I want us to, so the first point for today is, who do you call on? Then the next point I want to bring out there is that he said this axe head was borrowed. Do you want this the implication of having a borrowed tool for your your growth. Remember again, it was the widow, the, the widow, again, one of the sons of the prophets who had died and left a huge debt for his we were poor widow and his sons. And these sons were at the risks of being taken away as ransom for, for the uh, unpaid debt. This woman cried out to Elisha and Elisha said, what have you got? This woman said, I don't have anything. He said, take a look again at me. As my me adding my part there, and I said, Oh, just a little oil. And he said, Go and borrow verses. Go and borrow verses. Here again, they borrowed an axe. What is the implication? What the Lord has dropped in my heart, in my spirit, is the father. Because honestly, I've never heard anybody talked about this. They borrowed, you know, what I've, you know, the Holy Spirit just led this in my heart that sometimes what you need for your next level is a borrowed hand, borrowed information, borrowed support borrowed prayers do you have people around you do you have circle of friends who are there to hold your hands are you humble enough to go seek for help because you all in yourself god well you know god is so awesome and in the way he has created us he has not put everything in the mind and in the heart of one person or in the life of one person that's the right word to use he has not put every single thing in the life of one person anything and all the lots of the time most of the time what you need is in someone else and what someone else needs is in you so 
You need to be humble enough to ask for the help that you need. You need also to seek God to direct you to who the we call, we in the Christian group, we call it destiny helpers. There are people, you know, when people keep saying, I don't need any man, God is good enough for me. You are making a huge mistake because God has not designed us human like that. So that way it keeps us humble because you haven't got everything. I don't care how anointed you are. I don't care how smart you are. I don't care how intelligent you are. I don't care how rich you are. Whatever it is, you would still need need people. The rich still need the poor and the poor will need the rich. The educator will need the illiterate. You need someone in your life. You need people in your life. You need people you need to borrow from. You need people. I'm not talking about borrowing money. God does not need us to borrow money. So we should be, we, we are going to be lenders and not borrowers when it comes to that. But when it comes to support, look through the scripture. There was no one person that achieved anything all by themselves. I don't care how great they were. They needed, even Jesus needed the 12 to accomplish his mission here on earth. The apostles did, Paul did, he, Moses even did. Uh, you know, he had a, uh, um, Joshua, he had Caleb, he had Yeho and all the others. So every single person needs someone. So yes, they did borrow the ax. Go, go borrowing, go borrowing. If that's what's just stopping you from the expansion and the growth and the development in your life, go borrow, go borrow. Okay, so that's a, a point there. So the next thing I want us to look at is that Elisha asks, where did it fall? What is that exact spot where it fell? So again, what God is saying to you and I here is that sometimes when you encounter challenges, so a lot of times we, we begin to look, you know, as I say, my, a proverb my mom used to say to us when we were younger, I said, and I, it's, not a proverb, it's more or less like a saying, she would say, if, you, uh, uh, you, you've gone to the stream and you've got your water and you're in the water pot and you're coming back, you tripped and you fall. That when you fall, you don't begin to search around the spot where you fell. You don't begin to search for the problem that you search for where you tripped. Because it is where you trip that you should focus on what was it that tripped me. Because if you don't go back, that's big, that's reflection. If you don't go back and look at where you trip, you will trip there a million times over and over. If there was a log, there was a shooting out route or whatever it is that is on the floor there that tripped you and you're only bothered about where your water pot got broken. And you blame the, or sometimes we blame the wrong people in our lives. This was this person, this was that person. You're looking at where your water pot got broken. But no, retrace your footstep to where you tripped. So Paul, I mean, Elisha here is saying, where, what is the spot? Show me the spot. I can only solve this problem if I know the spot. If I know the root, if I know exact spot where this thing happened. Sometimes the issues we are dealing with have a root somewhere else. So we are dealing with the stems. We are dealing with, I mean, with the branches. We are dealing with the fruits that it's producing. We are dealing with all manner of things, but we need to get down to the root. Where is the root trace? Have a reflection. Have a time with yourself. You failed. You had counter challenges. You encounter problems. You're dealing with the pain and the struggle in your life. Look back a little bit and look. have a time for reflection. Reflection. And in that minute period of reflection, you begin to see where you personally went wrong. You will see what was responsible, what you ought to have done that you didn't do, or what somebody else did and how you could avoid it. So Elisha went, took them back, caused them to have a time to think, to say, where is the spot? Because it's, you know, when you go to the doctors, they don't deal usually with your symptoms. They do it with the root cause of the symptom. When you go to the hospital, you're like, oh, I've got a headache. I've got you know, I've got temperature, I've got this. They won't go dealing with just the symptoms. They want to investigate for that. They want, sometimes they ask you to do the blood test. They ask you to do this. They put the testicles. They check what this, they check that. A few weeks ago, my daughter was having this running temperature in and out. And, you know, they were checking. You know, they had to check in her throat, check in her ears. They need to find out what is the root. Rather than say, okay, take paracetamol and you'll be fine. They will need to find, investigate. So when you deal with the real issue, then the symptoms will fall off. Okay. So that was what Elisha did. Elisha tells with the root and when he dealt with the root the axe head began to float that brings me to the last point the axe head axe head is meta law of gravity does not allow metals to float axe head that was gone it was a hopeless situation it was a completely completely forgotten totally hopeless situation but yet yet when the power of god hits that situation it took a stern it took a stick or whatever a different translation might say and uh, let me see what does my say uh da 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 a stick, yeah. So either a stick or whatever, chew it there. 
All you need is the word of God in that situation. When God puts his hand in that situation, that matter will be resolved. So whatever represents your heart X, whatever represents that heart X that seems to have fallen into the water that looks hopeless and looks like this is completely gone. There's nothing else that can be done. I want to reassure you and assure you today that there is nothing God cannot do. Even your axe heads will float again. Your axe head will come back again in the name of Jesus Christ. So at this point, I would really want to pray with you. First and foremost, have Jesus in your boat. Are you born again? Have you given your life to Jesus? If you haven't, I invite you to this awesome, awesome relationship that is, you know, nothing compare with the relationship with the, the creator, your own God, your own creator, being in relationship with him as a child. I invite you to give your life to Jesus Christ. Ask for forgiveness of your sin, invite him into your life. Ola, that's all you need. I'll put your faith in him. It's by faith that you are saved through grace. All right. So next thing is that if you are dealing with it, an impossible situation, ask her fall into the the river. I pray for you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak to that ask head where, wherever you are, I command you to come up now in the name of Jesus Christ. I don't care what that ask head might represent in your life. Is it a sickness? Is it a difficult situation? Is it pain? Is it losses? Is it whatever? I cast that issue to this root in the name of Jesus Christ. I command the ask head to come up now in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak healing into that life. I speak peace of God into that situation in the name of Jesus I commanded there a reversal in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I ask that the divine intervention of God in your life in that situation, it took the divine intervention of Elisha for the acts to flow. I ask that there be a divine intervention in your life, in your home, in your family, even right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If this was a blessing to you, please share it. Share this video, like it, um, thumbs up, and leave me a comment. I want to hear what is this that's your own understanding from where we have read from 2 Kings chapter 6 from verse 1 to 7. God bless. I'll come away your way again very soon. Bye.